application of some central angles related to clocks. There will be a problem eventually on the chapter 6 test that is like this problem where you have to tell this, the measure of the central angle between two hands of a clock. So here is one problem. We'll probably have a couple of these through the unit. So you should just make note whether this is an easy problem for you or whether you struggled with it. But the first part, of course, is being able to sort of sketch in the correct time here. So if the time is 645, let's think about that for a second. For sure the minute hand is pointing straight out at the 9. Okay, so you've got the minute hand pointing directly at the 9 at 645. And then the hour hand, the shorter hand, is going to be not pointing at the 6, right? Because between 6 and 7 o'clock, the hour hand moves, just like the minute hand moves. So the shorter hand is pointing maybe something you know, like that. It's closer to the 7 than the 6. And so now let's think through what the angles are in the clock. So if the clock is a circle, of course, we know there's 360 degrees around the circle. So if we take 360 degrees and divide it by the 12 hours, so 360 degrees in the circle, the hours basically divided into 12 equal chunks. So each one of those is 30 degrees. So if we think about that, that means that the arc measure between 12 and 1 o'clock is 30 degrees. The arc measure between 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock is 30 degrees. The arc measure between the 2 and the 3 is 30 degrees, and so on and so forth. So every one of these is 30 degrees. So if we think about the angle formed between the hands of the clock, we can think about the arc measure out here. So we know we have 30 degrees between the 8 and the 9. We know we have 30 degrees between the 7 and the 8. So we have at least 60 degrees in this angle. However, the 30 degrees that is between the 6 and the 7, our central angle is not covering that entire 30 degrees. So let's think about how much it actually is left over. We have this little chunk down at the bottom here. If we extended out our hour hand. We've got this little bit right at the bottom. That's, that's what we need to know, how many degrees that is. Well, if you think about 645, how much of the hour has gone by at 645? Well, 45 minutes out of 60 minutes would be three-fourths of the hour. So three-fourths of an hour has gone by, which means that this hour hand right here has gone three-fourths of the way between the six and the seven. Three-fourths of the way. It's got one-fourth of the hour left over here to go through, and that's really what we want. We want that, that part, that one-fourth. Well, the entire amount between six and seven o'clock is 30 degrees. There's one-fourth of that 30 degrees that's left. One-fourth, because three-fourths of the hour has we've gone through, so three-fourths of 30 degrees we've already gone through. Now we have one-fourth of 30 degrees left to go through there. So if we think of 30 degrees and we want to do one-fourth of 30 degrees, now uh, we do a little multiplication, basically that's 30 divided by 4, 30 times 1 is 30, and then 1 times 4 is 4, so 30 divided by 4. If you take 30 and divide it by 4, you would get 7.5. So 7.5 degrees is how much is left down here at the bottom. So this part right down at the bottom is... 7.5 degrees. Okay, so our grand total central angle right here is going to be made up of 30 degrees, 30 degrees, and then another 7.5 degrees. Gill, so I'm just going to record that at the top the here. Sakaya Gill, they're waiting for you in the gym. Sorry about that interruption okay. here. I'm recording this after school. So we've got 30 degrees plus 30 degrees plus 7.5 degrees. So 30 plus 30 plus 7.5 would be 67.5 degrees. So that would be the angle between the hands of the clock at 645. So when you do more problems like this, just think about 30 degrees amounts. So count up how many 30s there are 
and then think about how much of the hour has gone by and what is left, and take that fraction of 30, and you'll get that remaining amount.